What is going on, Charles Bodson? So we finally have another book review for me. I read a lot of books. I read maybe three or four a week. And, there, and how I do it is right before I go to bed, I put on the audiobook at three times the speed. So if, so like something like Contagious, I can get that done in a night because it's probably, you know, it's probably an hour and a half, two hours if, at three times the speed. And then I actually buy the actual book. So it really resonates me resonates with me and I have to pay attention. So today we're going to be talking about Contagious. There we go. Just want to make sure there's no uh, reflection. We're going to go over really quick and the, the biggest points that I got out of it, I'm going to be looking over at my notes because I have a lot of notes. So really there's six areas that make something contagious. So contagious is, is something that uh, you keep going back to and it's essentially how, if you, if you saw the, the recent 60 Minutes, they actually, it's probably not recent anymore, but go into it, it's called Mind Hacking. And essentially all the apps that are coming out, any cell phone, any games, anything that's coming out, they're going to want you to... And even food, they want you to keep on coming back, okay? And then there's products that is talked about in this book. So in other words, for an app, they gamify it, they make it fun, they make it engaging. Uh, gamify, in other words, you know where you stand in a game. In other words, who's number one, number two, you can make it uh, where there's gameplay between players. So that makes you coming back for more. But then there's also products that he talks about in the book that you just go back to because it's either really catchy, it's really good, you know the tagline, and it's just, it's just why, why things catch on, essentially, is the, is the title. So number one is social currency. So s social currency, this is actually really interesting. We share things that make us look good. We share things that make us look good. So in other words, why do you share things on Instagram? A beautiful photo, out with your friends, uh, I'm now traveling to whatever country, or maybe a, a big job promotion, or whatever the case is, or a selfie. You share things that make you look good, okay? That's amazing because you want to put your currency of the photo of your standing up socially above the pecking order. So in other words, anything we do is just, just to, to just get a little bit bigger. You know, why do people leave legacies? People leave legacies or gifts or grants or they make a ton of money and they give it all away is because they want to be known for something, okay? There, there's something called The Denial of Death, a book called The De Denial of Death, is that you leave something behind because you actually want people to remember you for something, okay? So social cur currency is, is essentially saying it, you're sharing something that's cool, you know, like GoPro or Nike or Apple or Amazon. Like these, these are cool brands, okay? It's a brand, but you're sharing it, okay? It's like people that are a little embarrassed at working at a company, but now people are like, oh, I work at Google, I work at Facebook, and it's like, oh, really? That's, that's super cool. But if you work at like MySpace, you're like, oh, really? MySpace? Or you work at, say, a bank. You know, those aren't as fun and enticing brands. So that's the social currency of that is not going to really make you good, make you cool by sharing that, say, tagging your location. So number one is social currency. And the question to ask is, does talking about your product or idea make people look good? Okay, so when you talk about your product, app, idea, shirt, brand, whatever the case is, does it make people feel good? Do they want to actually share it? And when they share it, do they feel good? So if I share my run on, with Nike, in other words, Nike now has a Nike running club, and you can share your run, and on the, there's a little overlay on your image that shows how many miles you went, and it has the little check mark. That's cool. But if it was some other app, you're probably not gonna, you're not gonna share it because it's not as cool. The brand isn't as cool. It doesn't make you feel good. Okay, moving on to number two is triggers. This is, each, each of them is different. So, and you can, have, you can be contagious on social currency. Number two is triggers. Top of mind, tip of tongue. So in other words, when someone says Kleenex or Q-tips, that's top of mind. It's like, those are brands. It's not like tish, uh, nose tissue. It's like Kleenex or cotton swab for your ears. No, it's Q-tip. It's tip of mind. In other words, anytime you think of something, what triggers in your mind? Okay? You think of car insurance. Who do you think of? When you think of computers, what do you think of? When you think of, vid uh, say, video sites, you know, what, what triggers in your mind? What's that immediate thing that you, you say, this is it? Okay? So it's really bringing brand awareness around something. The, the trigger could be a word. It could be something that you do. In other words, I, a word, I, like I just said before, Kleenex, or I would say paper towels. Who do you think of? Do you think of Bounty? Because the paper picker, thicker, ah, da, 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 Bounty, you know, that, that's a trigger when you think of paper towels. 
Okay, but then a trigger could be an action, which is, oh, you're going running? What kind of shoes are you gonna wear? Okay, that could be Nike. Here are some of the questions. Consider the context. What cues make people think of your product or idea? What cue happens where someone says, okay, I'm gonna buy an Apple product. It's like, I need a computer. What's the cue that makes you think of the brand? Your brand, your idea, your app, your, your anything, whatever you're creating. Number three is emotion. Emotion is probably, honestly, one of the biggest things that you have to actually uh, just master. You have, to amass, you have to master your emotions, but you also have to master the emotions of your brand, how people feel about it. But most importantly is, th th there's a lot of things around this, okay? And emotion really is when they, say, when they say your brand, your idea, your app, whatever the case is, what's the emotion that goes through people's minds? I say united. People are United Airlines. People are like, well, they dragged that guy off. There's a lawsuit. They, they also don't treat their employees well. So the emotion circulating around that brand, not that good. But then there's other brands like Zappos. Zappos, I think, just donated a million dollars to some really good cause. So it's like when you think of Zappos, you think, what emotion do I get? Okay. So when you think of Delta or United Airlines, I might take Delta because the emotion that United gives me is not that pleasant. So here are some of the questions. Focus on the feelings. This is one of the most important things. Honestly, and, and the reason I say this is that this is why people buy. You know, this is why when, you know, Simon Sinek said it, Simon, Simon Sinek in his talk said, you just don't know why. You just, you, why'd you marry that person? I don't know, it just felt right. It just felt right. Why did you buy that house? I don't know, it just felt right. These are big decisions. Buying a house and marrying someone. And, and you're saying it just feels right. People go with their, with their feelings, it's just sales 101. They, they buy with their feelings and they justify logically. I married this person, I don't know, it just felt right. Well, they have a good family, they have a good job, they're fun, they're engaging, they're great to be around, they, they would be a fantastic father to my children. Why did you buy this house? I don't know, it just felt right. Well, the location is great, it's right across from the school that my children are gonna go to, the driveway's really big, and I love to you know, play hockey with my kids or throw the ball around, whatever. They justify it logically. So always focus on the emotion and people will justify it logically. Number four, public. Built to show, built to grow. We'll just jump right into the question. Does your product or idea advertise itself? Okay, can people see when other people are using it? In other words, what, whatever you have, is there a way to actually get it out publicly? So in other words, the, the, one of the best things is say a uh, restaurant. This is a great idea. A restaurant that not only tags their place, but they, they deliver really good food in a, in a way that people can take a photo and put it on Instagram. That's how you get your brand out there. But if you deliver the food and it's not Instagrammable or talkable, in other words, where you can tell other people social currency, then there's really no way to share your brand, your idea. You need a way to actually share it, okay? Sharing, the easiest way is obviously Facebook because they have a share button. That's why videos go viral. The, the, there's a couple of YouTube videos that go viral, but most, most of them are on Facebook because all you have to do is share it on your wall, share it on friends' walls, Messenger, whatever the case is, there's easier outlets to actually share. Continuing on with the fourth one, which is, can you create a behavior, that behavior residue that sticks around even after people use it? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Like, is there, is there a habit, is there, is there anything that goes through someone's mind after, it's like getting off the, a roller coaster, yet you're filled with emotions, you wanna go public with it, Video, Instagram story says, wow, that was crazy. That was a fa I just got off King Daka at Six Flags, that was insane. You tag Six Flags, you talk about King Daka, that's going public. You, you need to make your product or your app go public. Number five is practical value. News you can use, okay? Does talking about your product help other people help others, okay? So this is kind of hard to explain. How can you highlight incredible value, packaging your knowledge and expertise into useful information so others, so others will be able to disseminate? Okay, so for me, I'm in real estate. How do I actually practice, how do I actually Practically spread by brand awareness, there's a lot of ways. Number one is there's beautiful apartments that we actually share. Number two is information. So in other words, we put out information that people can share and say, this is what the, the current interest rates are. Here's a, an easy way to get a loan. Here's an easy way to buy a house. Do you actually need a real estate agent? Do you actually need an agent to sell your house? 
and you just go down the, the buying process or the selling process or whatever, for, what it is, whatever it is for you and you say, okay, how do I actually make this easier for people to understand my brand? If you make a bag, say, say you make a leather bag. I know, I know someone that actually did this. They actually show from the beginning to the end the cowhide, then actually you know, flattening it out, dyeing it, evening it out, cutting it, then stitching it, then putting on the, the buttons and the zippers and the handle and everything else. So you're seeing it from the beginning to the end and you're saying, wow, that's so cool. That's actually how people uh, make a bag or a leather bag and then you see the end product, but you see the entire formation of that bag. Practical, useful value of your bag. And then number six is stories. It's never gonna go anywhere. Stories is here to last and I, I don't care what anyone says, that's the reason we're on social media, is to tell a story, to see a story, to listen to a story. That's why we watch the news, for stories. Why we talk to friends. Storytelling has been around since there has been language. You know, telling the story of how to actually cook, how to eat, how to hunt, how to mate, you know, how, how to go to war. You know, that's, that was around when we came up with language and voice and, and the ability to actually translate ideas and it's gonna be in the future. That's, whether it's technology, whether it's voice, whether it's handwritten, whether it's pictures or anything else. Here are the questions. What is your Trojan horse? So in other words, Troj the Trojan horse story, everyone knows the story. Everyone knows the story. It's been, it's, it's gone through thousands of years of generation, of generational just storytelling. What is the storytelling of your product? I just talked about it in number six is, what's the story of that bag, that leather bag? From the beginning of the cowhide to the finished product on a shelf, what is the story of that, brand, that bag? What is the story of your company? Why did you start the company? Why did you start the brand? Why did you start the app? Why, who is your story? Where did you grow up? Um, what were you doing before? You have to tell stories. You have to tell stories about your product, your idea, but your company as well. Why did you start your company? Why do you continue starting your company? Where are you going? What are you innovating? How do you see the future? What's the marketplace sur surrounding your product your, or your idea? If you're in retail, you have to tell a vastly different uh, idea than say you're a dating app or you're a personal brand. You have to tell your story. Continuing on with the questions. Is your product or idea embedded in a broader narrative that people want to share? In other words, the people want to share your story. The Trojan horse story is crazy. You know, funny stories are always good. Things that, that, that feel that there's tension. They brought up tension in here. You have to bring up some kind of tension in the story. So I highly recommend the book. The book is, I think it has like four, out, four and a half out of five stars on Amazon. Very good book. Obviously, link is below. It's obviously affiliated, so I can keep on doing these book reviews. The next one we're actually gonna do is Pitch Anything. And this, this book was crazy. I don't know if you're in sales, but you need to get into sales if you, or if you are in sales, you gotta read this book. So have an awesome day. Pick up Contagious. And I'm Charles Bowenson. Subscribe to the video. Leave your comments below. Have an awesome day. Talk to you soon.